Indie Mogul. Today, I'll show you how to build a body mounted camera rig for achieving some interesting over the shoulder shots. Hey, Indie Mogulers, Griffin here. Yesterday, I ran a muddy, obstacle filled race called the Warrior Dash. And a lot of runners noticed I was wearing this, a GoPro Hero 2 camera over my shoulder. In fact, I met a lot of interesting people at the race, many of whom may be watching right now. So welcome to Indie Mogul. We make tutorial videos for low budget indie filmmakers. And today I'll show you how to make this simple body rig for just $14. The GoPro Hero 2 is a small, waterproof, relatively inexpensive HD camera, and after I got one, I knew I wanted to use it to capture the action at the Warrior Dash. But when runners use a GoPro, they often use a head or chest mount, resulting in pretty shaky footage, not terribly interesting to watch. I wasn't going to run three miles with a heavy steady cam, so I knew my footage would be shaky, but I was inspired by a fellow moguler, Barbster360, who made this third person body rig for a GoPro. Because the camera is locked onto his body, the world around is shaky, but he's always in the middle of the frame, giving the audience something steady to focus on. It's like the third person camera view in a video game, and also very similar to Snorri Cam, which is usually pointed right at the actor's face, like in this low budget Y Oak music video that I really like. To accomplish my goal, many mogulers suggested Corridor Digital's camera rig, but this race would be a challenging environment for a camera, so mine would have to be compact and tough, lightweight and comfortable enough to wear for an entire race. I also wanted to make it easy to adjust the camera and remove the rig, in case I couldn't fit through the obstacles. Like a lot of DIY camera rigs, I opted for PVC pipe because it's cheap, lightweight, and easy to assemble. So I bought a 5 foot length of half inch pipe, 4 elbow joints, 3 T joints, 4 45 degree angles, and 1 cap, PVC cement, a couple lashing straps, and an old belt, or I used an extra buckle strap I had. I cut several lengths of pipe with a miter saw, creating lots of PVC confetti, and started dry fitting the pipe and fittings together. I cut a quarter inch hole in the PVC cap. This is how I'll mount the camera, with a couple washers, a quarter inch screw, and some rubber to keep it from turning. My design features a long rectangle to secure against my back, and two arms to support the camera. This keeps it strong and less bouncy. After my first test, I wanted a tighter shot, so I shortened the arms to move the camera closer to my back and raised the column to keep it over my shoulder. Of course, you could use any combination of pipe lengths to get the distance and angle you want. After I was happy with the design, I labeled all the pipe pieces and marked where the joints meet. You'll see why in a minute. It's already a strong design, but to make sure it survives, I'm taking it apart and adding PVC cement in a well-ventilated room. One at a time, I apply a thin layer of cement to the inside of a joint and the outside of the corresponding pipe. With a quarter turn, the pipe fits all the way in. The cement dries quickly, and it would be hard to make changes, so I use my markings to make sure the angles line up perfectly. I didn't use cement on the camera cap, so I could pop it off easy, adjust the angle, and unscrew the camera. With a leftover can of dark blue spray paint, I gave it a makeover. Then, to secure shoulder straps and a belt strap, I sewed tight loops around the pipe. Like a backpack, the shoulder straps go from the top of the rig to the bottom, and the belt keeps things tight. Make sure all of the straps are adjustable because you'll want the rig tight against your body. For the race, I didn't care about seeing the rig in the shot, but you could also strategically clothe your actor to cover up the straps and pipes. You can also use any lightweight camera with a rig like this, or modify the design to shoot from a different angle. So let's see how it performed during the race. I think it looks cool. I shot in 1280 by 960 mode because it has the widest field of view. So when I edit in widescreen, I can choose which part of the frame to show. It's also 48 frames per second, which lets me slow it down nicely. Because my body is locked to the middle of the frame, speeding up the footage creates an interesting time-lapse effect. I can also turn the rig around for a snorri cam type shot. And the backpack style makes it easy to remove during tight obstacles. Check this out, at one point the camera hit a tree and popped off. 
but the PVC cap is easy to reattach. During this muddy race, I had to remember to check the lens and clean it off occasionally. I'll edit a better highlight reel from the race later this week, so if you want to check that out, you should subscribe to my personal channel right here. And there's also more information about today's build in the video description. On today's playlist, I have the third-person body rig from Corridor Digital right here, and Y Oak's low-budget Snorricam music video, plus the promo video from the Warrior Dash. Thanks for watching, please leave a comment, and remember, if you want advice from other indie mogul filmmakers, you should join the conversation in our forums at forum.indiemogul.com. Thanks.